Hey everybody, welcome to Faith with Katie. I'm Katie Souza. We are live from Naples. That's right, you heard it. Naples, Florida, everybody. We've moved the entire ministry down to Florida, and here we are. Our set is up. This is our second week broadcasting from our new location in Naples, and we are excited. Thus the palm tree in the background, amen, because that's what it looks out. It looks like outside my window. Yes, grateful to be in Florida, and grateful that you guys are all online right now please chat in chat in and tell me where you're watching from right now if you're not online to be able to chat in go to my faith TV on Facebook or Katie Souza on Facebook and tell me where you're watching from you're gonna want to tune in and you're gonna want to share this broadcast because today is a very special episode of faith with Katie because our very special guest is pastor Benny Hinn and his beautiful wife my very good friend Suzanne Hinn they've come to tell us about biblical prophecy, the importance of Israel in this hour, and what the Lord is showing us through everything that's happening in Israel right now that points to the time of the arrival of Christ even. This could be uh, us getting even closer and closer to the time of the end and seeing the Lord manifest in this earth. Boy, wow, what an exciting time it is. Pastor Benny's going to be up in just a minute with his beautiful wife, Suzanne, but right now, let's watch today's selfie miracle testimony video. Check it out. My name is Clarissa Nagy, and I'm at the Glory and Prayer Institute here with Katie Souza, and God is doing a progressive healing for me. So in July, when they were diagnosing me with all of this, I just I started re-listening to the, her teaching on the spirit of death. And so I was doing all of the activations when they told me that my vocal cord was dead, and I was like, I don't receive that. And so I was just doing them, and she told us to lay our hands. Well, actually, we were just supposed to sing, but I laid my hands on my vocal cords, and I started singing, and I felt it start moving, and it started working. So, yes, um, I was online for the um, you know, healing and deliverance, and one of my, my right side vocal cord wasn't working. And uh, during the activations that she's been in there, it started to work again. So I'm just believing for complete recovery of that. And here today, I had tumors all up in my neck and all over here and in my lungs. And all the ones that were here, I can't feel anymore. This is all gone. And these are slowly dissolving. So um, it's a miracle. God is healing me. And uh, he's continuing to heal me until they're all gone. Amen. Holy Spirit is so good. I actually personally prayed for that woman the second time that she had been to the conference. And when I laid my hand on her chest, she had all of these lumps from the growths and the tumors that were spread across her chest. And she had two huge tumors on her neck. And as I literally swept my hand across her chest, the Holy Spirit melted all of the tumors and they completely disappeared. And then the tumors on her neck began to get smaller and smaller. Jesus is awesome. And he's on the move in this hour, guys. So expect a miracle and even expect it today. As we bring on our special guest, we're going to get right to it. Please welcome to today's broadcast, Pastor Benny Hinn and Suzanne Hinn. How are you? I'm doing well. and Thank you for having us. So and I are, are happy to be with you. Yeah, your wife and, and I have been friends for years now. She's one of my very closest friends. She's a dear, dear person in my life, and I really appreciate her. And I've really grown very fond of being around you and your family. I love the evenings when we go out to eat um, and have dinner, and you start telling stories. And it is fascinating. I sit there on the edge of my seat when you tell these incredible stories of your life. I mean, you've lived the life of a hundred people and the things that you have seen and experienced and all the wisdom that you carry, um, it's just incredible. I've had the privilege of, you know, you even letting me uh, videotape you on my phone while you do that. And everyone in the room just sits there mesmerized as you, as you talk for hours. So it's a very big blessing to have you both here today. Oh, thank you, dear, thank you. I know you have a very powerful message today about pro prophecy. Um, there has been some incredible things that have taken place lately in Israel that are pointing to significant events, scriptural events, and nobody knows this better than you. 
So I want to hear right from you, right from you about what the Lord has been showing you. Well, first of all, thank you for having us. And secondly, uh, people may not know I'm from Israel. Uh, I lived in Jaffa. I was born about a block away from the house of Simon the Tanner. My daddy was involved in politics when we were young. And then we immigrated to Canada, July of 68. But I remained very connected to the land. I've been there many times. And I'm very well aware of what's going on in Israel. In fact, I wrote a book called Blood in the Sand years ago that the, the, uh, a former prime minister actually wrote my foreword. He said I knew more about the land than he did. That was quite a nice thing. But the thing is that a lot of people don't really understand is that Israel is the voice of prophecy. So to, to, to ignore Israel is a big mistake when it comes to our faith. We need to understand uh, what is God saying through the Jewish people. So first of all, uh, Winston Churchill years ago said, he said, as the world deals with the Jews, so God deals with the world. Wow. So the way nations deal with Israel is the way God deals with them. So when you bless the nation of Israel, God will bless you. Mm. When you don't, God will not bless you, and so on. In fact, in Deuteronomy 32, it says very clearly, if I can have your Bible, so just turn to Deuteronomy chapter 32, and I want to explain something to all of you, and you can all go with me in your Bibles. Okay. <clears throat> I want to read a very, in, uh, very important verse 8. It says, When the Most High gave the nations their inheritance, when He separated the sons of men, He set the boundaries of the peoples according to the number of the sons of Israel. That's a very powerful statement, a very powerful scripture. And uh, what, what, what this says basically is the bounds of the nation spiritually, not only naturally, but spiritually are established by what God does with the Jewish people. Wow. So as, as, as God deals with Israel, he deals with the nations. Mm. God's dealings with Israel affect the way he deals with the world. Now, there's a lot I can say about that, but that's not what we're, we're here to talk about. What we're here to talk about is what what significance the elections that just took place have prophetically. They have a lot. It's a very, very amazing moment, in fact, in Israel's history and in prophecy. So let's talk about Israel for a quick moment and the history of the land. Now, most of you probably know, and I'm sure some of you don't know, <laughs> the amazing miracle called Israel because a people scattered for 2,000 years would come back home is a miracle. Yes. Because to be scattered that long, you vanish from mm. history. But God said, I will make an end of all nations, yet I will not make an end of thee, saith the Lord. Meaning that nations have disappeared, but the Jews are still here. So we ask, where are the Babylonians? Gone. Oh. Where are the Assyrians? Gone. Where are the ancient Egyptians? Gone. Gosh. Where are the Moabites, Edomites, all the rest of them, all the ites? They're all gone. Oh. Israel is still here. Yes. Now that is an amazing miracle that needs to sink in. Many nations are gone. Where is the Roman Empire? Gone. And so much more. So the Queen of England one day, Queen Victoria years ago, asked her prime minister, who was a Jew, named Disraeli. She said, Disraeli, give me one verse in the Bible that proves there's a God. He said, Your Majesty, I'll give you one word, the Jew. <laughs> That's wow. a very powerful answer. He said, just one word proves there's a God, the Jew, because as long as there's a Jew, there's a God. In other words, 
With, <laughs> without God, there'd be not a Jew alive. Yeah, I, I don't even mean this. to interrupt you, sir, but that just that simple unfolding of those truths is incredible. I've never heard it said that way. And wow, I mean, like you said, everyone else has disappeared but the Jewish people. There has to be a God. Well, more than that, thank you for saying that, but more than that, imagine a language surviving 2,000 years? Wow. Like, like, wait, hold it, hold it. Here we are living in America, or any nation people live in in the Western world. Many of them had their forefathers immigrated from some place. So think about how many Americans came from Finland or Sweden or Germany or other nations. Mm -hmm. How long does it take for that language to disappear? Mm -hmm. One generation. Wow. Maybe two, but mostly one. So my children don't speak Arabic mm -hmm. and they don't speak Hebrew. I did. So our family moved to Canada. Do my children speak Hebrew? No. Arabic? No. Or whatever. You know, we spoke French because it was a, a kind of third language in that part of the world. So think about my grandchildren. They wouldn't even know how to begin, including my kids still don't know how to begin. So one generation and that language is gone. 2,000 years? Wow. That's humanly impossible. A language won't live past one generation or two max. Gosh. We're talking 2,000 years because God said in the book of Jeremiah to the Jewish people, when you come back, you'll come back speaking Hebrew. Wow. So when people say, you know, it's not a God, my answer is, look at Israel. How could even that nation survive? Think about how many tyrants tried to kill them over the ages. And, and when judgment came on them because of their sin, six million came out with Moses. 44,000 came back with Nehemiah and Ezra and Nehemiah because of sin. Wow. Six million came out with Moses. Now, because of sin, God begins to judge them and cut them down. Hmm. They go to Babylon, they come back from Babylon, hmm. speaking Aramaic, they lost, they lost Hebrew, they lost the language when they were in Babylon. Wow. While they were there, Sue, and dear Katie and all of you, Hebrew stopped being spoken in Babylon. So when they came back, they came back speaking Aramaic. That's why the book of Daniel from chapter two on is in Aramaic. Oh my gosh. Didn't you know that? No, I did not know that, sir. If you read the book of Daniel, the first mm. two chapters are in Hebrew, and from there on, it's in Aramaic. Wow. Because of the influence of Aramaic on Daniel himself. Whew. People don't know that. But now they came back with Ezra, who spoke Hebrew, by the way, he's the one who gave us uh, you know, a lot of the books of the Bible that we have. Mm. People don't know that either. I didn't. Okay. So, oh, yeah, yeah. But anyway, that's, that's, another, that's another story. He was a scholar, a descendant of Aaron, by the way. But anyways, so Hebrew was spoken only in the synagogue from Ezra's day to the Lord's day. And when the Lord was on earth, Greek was spoken. Yeah. Not Hebrew. So very few knew Hebrew. Paul the Apostle gave his witness in Greek and Hebrew. Yeah. So some of them knew it by that time, but not the, the entire Jewish world. Mm. But in 1948, a man named Ben Yehuda had a vision. And God told him to rewrite the Hebrew language, reinvent it, bring it back to life. And he went to the Bible and it was reborn. Now think about the miracle that one man would convince a whole nation to speak that language when they all, when Israel came back in 48, they spoke 77 languages. Okay, they were dispersed for 2000 years. 1948, Ben-Gurion declares the state of Israel. Jews begin to come back home from Russia, Germany, on and on. 
Some of them had been there prior. The majority came after 48. They spoke 70, over 70 languages. How can you build a nation with different languages? You can't. It'll disappear in no time. Yes. Think about the think about the Tower of Babel. What what dispersed the world? Mm. They couldn't speak the same language. So now, God knew there would be no Israel without a language that would unite them. And and one man, Ben Yehuda, convinced the entire nation of Israel to speak Hebrew. That by itself is another miracle. It would be like me trying to convince a million people to speak Arabic. Was Forget this it. on the return, sir, when they came back to Jerusalem that this in happened? 48, no. In 1948, now, this is another one. 1948, if that doesn't prove there's a God, I don't know what does. Right. Okay, think about this. They came out of the of the of the ashes of the Holocaust. Mm. Hitler tried to kill them, killed six million of them. Now they come to the Holy Land. They don't dwell on their past. They look at their future. They bring the land back to life that was full of swamps and mosquitoes and mal uh, and malaria. You name it. The land of Israel was mostly desert. And the north flooded. The Arabs didn't even want it. Wow. They were dying from they were dying from malaria, so nobody wanted to be there. The Jewish people come back. They drain the swamps. The whole land comes back to life. Today they are exporting vegetables and fruits from those same places that were, yeah. you know, full of full of malaria. So now. Wow. The land starts to come back to life because the the people came back. Ben Gurion did not have an army. There were different groups fighting the British and so on. He had to unite them. How many cannon did they have when 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 the war started? Six armies invaded Israel. Six armies invades Israel in '48. Wow. How many cannon did they have? One. How can you fight six armies with one cannon? God. How many, wait, wait, how many planes? One. Oh my God. Did they have bombs on those planes? No, they had soda bottles. Soda <laughs> bottles. So they won the war without having e even enough guns or an air force. Oh my God. Planes began coming slowly afterwards. The first plane they had that drove away a whole army, the Egyptian army came with their tanks, went up in the air. They threw soda bottles from that plane by hand. One man, one man threw the soda bottles and soda bottles make a like a whistle when they when they come down. And the Egyptian army fled when they heard the whistles. Oh, my gosh. It's only, almost like only, Gideon. Yeah, it's like only God can do that. A whole army fled with soda bottles. Oh my gosh. It's and incredible. that one cannon, they would move it from one place to the other. They won the war wow. in 48 against six armies. It's incredible. Well, yeah. Oh my gosh. And then the land began to revive and prosper. And today, your iPhone, half of it is made in Israel. Mm. All this is more signs, sir, like you said, that, that it, Israel is the center of our planet. Not only that, listen, not even 80 years ago, Israel was restored, okay? Mm. Now the world has been transformed because of that nation. In agriculture, they invented the dripping system, it's called. Mm. They, 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 they've changed the world through their medicine technology, military. Today, Israeli brilliance is protecting the United States militarily. Wow. The, the Aero Project is changing militaries around the world. <laughs> and I can keep you, I can keep you, even Germany is buying Israeli technology to be protected today from Russia, today. Well, everyone and we knows can that Israel is very advanced in all areas 
including yeah, innocent. but 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 why why? Because, because God. God is their God still. Yeah. He is mm -hmm. the God of Israel. So now, how does Bibi fit with all this? Amazingly, right. it does. Here's why: because under his administration, and I don't want to get into explaining Israeli politics, but even that itself is fascinating. You have 120 seats in parliament. You have to win 61 seats to have a government. So they don't choose in Israel. They don't vote for a president. They vote for a party. Okay. His party, Likud, that began under Begin, Menachem Begin, today is the largest party in Israel. So he lost the last election, not because he lost in that his party still had more seats than anyone else, but they could not form a coalition. So what they do is, let's say somebody, okay, they win 30 seats. The next party in line wins, let's say, 20-something seats. The president says to the one who won most seats, go form a government. So he has to go and make deals with, with the smaller parties that agree with him. Same ideology, whatever. Right. Bibi, Bibi could not do that the last election. They had, imagine, five elections in four years because they could not form a government. Not enough people wanted to join his government, his Likud. So the other parties who hate him, most of them, joined together, mostly from the left, some centrist and so forth. But it didn't last because they didn't agree with each other. Mm. And everybody knew it's gonna, it's gonna collapse anyways, and it, and, it, and 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 it did. Now, elections are held for the fifth time. His party again wins as many seats as the last time. People don't know that they win as many seats as the last time, about 30, 32. But what happened is, other parties, like a man named Kavir uh, uh, was Bevier. He, this, this, this man, because of all the attacks by terrorists, won 14 seats. And he did not have a whole lot of seats the last time around. So he joined with Bibi. He's, oh. you know, a little more, a little more extreme than Bibi. Actually, okay. Bibi is not extreme at all. Bibi is more like in the center. But these extremist groups or more to the right groups joined his his government, their religious groups, and now he's able to win, and he did. So now there's a new government with people from the right, not from the left, wow. who will rule the country, God willing, for four more years. The reason I say God willing, because if one leaves the coalition, the whole thing collapses, but I'm sure they will stay together. But now, why Bibi? Because Bibi is the only man I know, and I, I know him personally, mm. that has a Bible study in his home. Oh, praise God. None of the others do. One of the parties called Merits on the left said there's no God. Now there's no Merits. They're out of the apartment <laughs> altogether. They couldn't even get one seat. <laughs> that, 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 that. One party that said, no God, there's no God, <laughs> didn't even win one seat. Wow. They're not, they're not even a part of the government anymore. Bye. So God says, since you say there's no me, I'm saying there's no you. <laughs> Out. <laughs> but anyways, the thing is, when BB, and let me talk about BB a little bit. I know him personally. Every time I've been with him, and I have, he said, Benny, pray for me. The man really is hungry for the Lord. He's a Bible man. He's not a born-again Christian. He's a Bible man. And one of his closest friends is my closest friend in Israel. Wow. A lady named Verit, who really is looking for the Lord in an amazing way. That's another story. I cannot get into it now. It's not even right to talk about that. Can, I ask, can I ask you this, sir? Is, is B.B. born-again Christian? No, no. He's not a born-again Christian, but he is extremely close to evangelicals. Okay. He's very, very, he's very close to us as evangelicals. He knows exactly who we are, what we believe, all that stuff. But the thing about him is he is, he, he is a very godly man. He's a very Bible man. He knows the Bible real good, more than you realize. And he comes from an amazing family. His father was a historian. His brother, Yoni, was the man that 
was used to free the Israelis in Entebbe years ago and, and was killed for it wow. when they hijacked a plane and took these precious people to Entebbe, Uganda, under, you know, Idi Amin at the time. Anyways, so Bibi is the man because of his history, family history. Number two, his amazing political history when he was the ambassador to the UN for Israel and became the voice of, of anti-terrorism in the world. Even even Ronald Reagan used to listen to him. He, Ronald Reagan said he learned from Bibi things about mm. terror, how to stop it. Yeah. So, so, so the man is brilliant. He's brilliant with Bible knowledge, politics, military, terrorism, you name it. Right. And he's strong. He, 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 he will not allow the enemies to hurt Israel. His whole aim is we have to protect the Jewish people. So now, under his previous administrations, this is the sixth time he is prime minister. Hmm. Six times. I prophesied, I prophesied over him back in the 90s. We, we met at the King David Hotel at one in the morning. I said, you'll be prime minister. That was at one in the morning with Mike Evans and I, you know, and me uh, being being with him. He he came to see us at the King David Hotel. And and the thing that is so remarkable is what has happened under his primership or his rule, his authority, his guidance, that Israel began to thrive, and they and they made peace with the Arab with many of the Arab nations. That's a miracle. Yes, you sweet yes. people need to understand what a miracle that is. It could not have happened without Bibi. Let me explain this to you, okay? Okay, when Pastor, we, before you go on, I just want to have everybody make sure that you're sharing the broadcast right now. This this incredible insight that Pastor Benny's bringing is crucial in this time in the earth. Uh, Jerusalem, Israel is in the center of it. And Pastor Benny's unwinding this pro prophetic word for you right now. So please share the broadcast as we continue today. Again, everybody, Pastor Benny is here today. Please share the broadcast. These issues, these things, these prophetic signs that are happening now in Israel are crucial to all of us. So it's so key that you're here today, Pastor. Continue with what you were saying. This is fascinating. Well, what I was saying is when we left Israel back in 68, uh, we had left because of the 67 war and the Arab world at that time was at war with Israel. We never thought we'd see the day when there'd be peace. I remember the day when Abdel Nasser of, of Egypt uh, said he would he would push the Jews in the uh, in the sea. Mm. Uh, in '67, we dug ditches in in our yard, thinking the bombs would fall and kill us all. Wow! And uh, there was there was war. I lived through three wars. Think about this. By the time I was 14 years old, I lived through three wars. I was four years old during the campaign in Sinai at uh, 56. I still remember when my dad put black things on the on the windows, uh, covers. And I, I still remember uh, very vividly the 67 war and the war of attrition afterwards. And then we had to leave the land because too many wars. And now for me to to see when 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 Sadat made peace with Israel back in the 70s, we all sat there and cried. We couldn't believe it. And then Jordan made peace with Israel. And now all these Arab nations are making peace from Bahrain and, and UAE and Sudan and Morocco and so on. That is unbelievable. And now the next thing that's going to happen, and by the way, all of this happened, those, those recent nations making peace with Israel under Bibi. He was the one who went sec actually secretly and met with them. <laughs> and the reason they want peace is because Israel was helping them technologically. Mm. So Israel was giving, listen, Israel was giving Morocco mm. technology on agriculture, turning their desert into a green land. Mm. Israel was, was helping those nations like Sudan and others uh, in the UAE with their technology and building up their nations. Who would want to stay an enemy of such a nation helping you? For free, for free not even charging them for it. Hmm. So Israel today is helping her enemies with agriculture, giving them some incredible things that they can build their, their economies with and so on. So now Bibi said a few days ago, 
He said, when I get back in, I will make peace with Saudi Arabia. And, and he will. That is staggering. Wow. Because when the Saudis make peace with Israel, and they will, not only because of technology, but also because of Iran. Hmm. They're all afraid of Iran. And let me talk about that in just a second. Let me just finish with this. So when the, when the Saudis make peace with Israel, it will force all other Arab nations to make peace with Israel. Because the Saudis fund those nations. They give money to them. They have great influence with them. Plus, plus, it will weaken the Palestinians. Now, what's happening in Iran is incredibly important too. Because only Bibi can stop that regime from staying in power. How so, sir? Mossad. The Mossad, the, the CIA, as you call it here. The, the Mossad is all over Iran. No. Oh. They're very involved in Iran. The are previous they there government, openly or are they there covertly? They're all hiding, of course. Yes. They don't know that they're there. Yeah. But the, the Mossad is a powerful force inside Iran right now. And Bibi was funding all that. The previous government backed off. Oh. They wanted to appease all that stuff. So now he's back in power, meaning he will be funding and helping the Iranian people. Yes. He did a video. You know, you're seeing all those protests right now go, going on. Yeah. Bibi two years ago or, 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 or so one of his people sent me a video that he sent to Iran offering to help the Iranian people. And and wow. and began helping them in a in a in a quiet way, you know. Before that, he was offering the Iranian people on social media because many of them are on social media oh to help them. All these things going on today began with Bibi talking lovingly to the people of Iran, oh. and now they become lovers of Israel. Oh my! Most gosh. Iranians love Israel today. That's a fact. Do you know that the uh, uh, royal prince, the Shah, uh, the son of the Shah, uh, who lives here in the U.S. in Washington, had given an interview to the Post in Jerusalem and said, when I get into power in Iran, I will be Cyrus again. Oh, my gosh. Really? That's incredible news. Oh my he said, God. I will help the Jewish people. I will befriend them. Oh. So Iran has a great future, in my opinion. Wow. I was, listen, this is exciting, okay? I've always known I will preach in Tehran before God takes me home. And I said that in 2019 at Jesus Image at their conference, my own children. And a man I was talking to, a very high up man from Iran about a few days ago, who lives in Los Angeles, told me, he said, I had a dream about you, that you were preaching in my country. Oh my goodness. That man is... He's a Muslim still to, to this day, that man. But he told me he has a university called Liberty in Los Angeles, not, not the same Liberty, you know, Christian, the, you know, Christian one. This is a second one called Liberty. He runs it. He owns it. He's a very wealthy man. They did a study. His un university did a study among the Iranian people recently. They, they asked 4,000 at one time, 2,000 at a, at a separate time. When the regime falls, what religion will you choose? Over 60% said Christianity. Oh, my goodness. So Iran is ripe for revival right now. Wow. Most Muslims who are having dreams about the Lord are Iranians. It's incredible. So the, the, the future is very bright for Iran. But Bibi is back in power now, meaning it's going to accelerate. Yes. That regime will fall. Those people will be free. So... God is going to use Bibi in a very powerful way, not only for Israel economically and otherwise, even helping the nations of the world militarily and so on, but even even spiritually, helping people, the people of Iran and so on. Do you feel so like we that are could in, happen in, in, with, in his next reign of power? He Does he have four years or six years? What does he have, sir? Four. Four years. Four years. Yeah. Do you think yeah. that that is but possible that God will move in that time? Do you feel that? Look, look, I don't see the Iranian. I don't see the Iranian regime lasting another year. 
Wow. You can't look, look, you can't have protests that are going on right now daily over a month already intensifying. There's no way a government can, can sustain that. The Iranian people are lacking two things. Number one, a leader, these, these protesters, they don't have a voice, like they don't have a man leading or a woman leading them. So they need that. Yep. And we need to pray. We need to pray that God will raise somebody up for them. So they don't have that yet. Right. And the second thing, the army has not joined the protesters yet. And they will. Event because it's happened every time. When the nation begins to protest, eventually the army joins them against the government. And that's what happened with the Shah back in the 70s in Iran when he was toppled. So when that happens, it's over for that regime. And there's no no way they, they, they can last with all these uh, protests going on. In fact, right now there's talk about Iran attacking uh, Saudi Arabia and the U.S. to get the, the attention of the world away from these protests. Yeah. As it's hurting them already. So uh, it's amazing days ahead. Now, let me go back to talk about Bibi. Bibi is a very spiritual man. He told a friend of mine, this lady I know quite well. She's very close friends with his wife. And she's looking for the Lord. And her, her husband passed away. This lady's husband passed away. So she was mourning for her husband and Bibi came to comfort her with his wife. Uh, and, uh, and she was praying, Jesus, where are you? She's on the sea. She lives on the Sea of Galilee, owns a big uh, company there that, you know, people use her boats to, to be on the Sea of Galilee. Anyway, so Jesus, where are you? She says, Bibi is sitting there listening to her he said and she was calling on on the lord he said if he will answer you i will become a believer and you and i will preach the gospel together oh. he said wow. that to her and she told me that how how long ago was I, that was that recently about about uh, four years ago mm. three four years ago well, God did answer so, her. He put him back in power. <laughs> I, I believe the Lord is going to reach his heart. No way. I mean, there's no way he won't because that man is, is, is very open to the Lord. I mean, imagine telling me, a preacher, an evangelist, whenever I'm with him, pray for me. You know, nobody else ever asked me. I've met other prime ministers of Israel before him who never said that to me. Hmm. But he did. Do you so feel, that sir, is, that his return to his office is also going to help uh, cause revival in the United States and the rest of the world to s begin to spread even more. Well, we don't know what's going to happen in the in the U.S. with his election as prime minister, except that if the well, I shouldn't say if when the Republicans uh, win the House and God willing the Senate, they they will invite him to come and speak because they did the last time, and and he is very. He is a, a, a very strong, a very strong voice about stopping Iran's nuclear plan. And uh, we know what's going on now with Biden, who is negotiating with them like Obama did before him. The problem with, with, that, with that negotiations is they are promising the Iranians billions of dollars. If they'd stop their program, they're, they're not going to stop it. And they're going to still use those billions of, of dollars, maybe even more than that, to fund terrorism against Israel and the world. So as long as Iran is in power, they will fund Hezbollah, uh, you know, Israel's northern enemy. They will fund Hamas down in Gaza, Israel's southern enemies. They will fund other, uh, you know, enemies of the West, in Yemen and so on and so forth, even in Europe. So with Iran gone, Israel will be totally at peace and there will be no more attacks against her by Hezbollah or Hamas. They'll have no money to attack Israel. Mm. So that day will come. There's no doubt in my mind that day is coming. So Bibi is, is there. I think God put him there. Now with the U.S., the election, we all pray. Uh, that the Republicans will will get into into power, 
and and when that when when that does, I think Bibi will have a voice with them, and to them against helping Iran, and I think God will use them for that. To be honest with you. What other prophetic um, signs do you see happening in Israel right now, sir? That tell us where we are at well, in God's time clock. Okay, number one, their their technology uh, is now advancing to to the place where they will affect the world prophetically with AI. Okay. I don't think they, they really know that yet, but Israeli technology is developing so fast, they, they become a superpower now when it comes to the newer technologies, all that that people are talking about today, with with robots, blah, 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 all that stuff. So um, in, in Ezekiel 28, turn to Ezekiel 28 for a second, darling, thank you. Um, it says very clearly that Antichrist will be smarter, he will be wiser than Daniel. Well, for that to happen, it's got to include robotic uh, uh, technology in him. And that could come from Israel, or Israel will be, will, will be a big part in, in bringing that fulfillment. Ezekiel 28, there we go. All right. So I want you to, I want you to listen. <clears throat> uh, what God says to him, uh, it says, the word of, of the Lord came again to me, saying, son of man, say to the prince of Tyre, now that's the Antichrist, and so on. Because your heart is lifted up, you say you're a, you're a God, and so on and so forth, though you imagine yourself to be more than mortal and think your mind is as wise as the mind of God, behold, you are yourself wiser than Daniel. That's in verse 3, you're wiser than Daniel. Well, for the Antichrist to be wiser than Daniel, he would have to be part, uh, uh, partially robotic. Because mm. today robots are, are much wiser than people. And soon robots will uh, produce more, more robots. Today the robots they're producing, uh, it, it's humanity that's, that's, that's building them. Later robots will build robots. And that's where the danger comes to the, mm. to the world. I see. And so, uh, Pat Robertson years ago said that Antichrist will be a robot. Many of us said, I don't know about that. Uh, I, I, of course, I still don't believe he's right on that, but I think he's partially right. Mm. Because you, you see today the new technologies out there with, with, the, with that AI, with AI, it's just mind-blowing, really, and frightening, quite demonic. You know, in the book, uh, in the book of Genesis, Beginning at chapter 6, we see a, a mixture of angelic and human at that time. Right. When angels slept with women and giants were, were born to block the coming of the Messiah, mm. to stop the coming of the Lord, Satan mixed angelic seed with human seed. Yeah. Uh, but it failed, of course, because God rescued Noah. He was the only man still carrying the, the messianic seed. And Jesus said that before his return, it would be like the days of Noah, meaning mixture. Yeah. When, when, when he said like the days of Noah, he didn't just mean by wickedness. He meant mixture. What is the mixture today? Robotic and human. Mm -hmm. Why? To stop the coming of the Messiah. That's why the Lord said, when I return, will there be faith on the earth? Mm. See? It's going to fail, of course. We know that. But... There's a lot happening, but prophetically, you asked me that question. Uh, Jerusalem now, well, let me just go, go back. With the religious parties that are now in power with Bibi, Jerusalem will not be divided. The previous government that just failed wanted to separate the land. They believed in a two-state solution. Oh, gosh. The new, government, the new government says, no way. We will not allow it. They're going to build more settlements to secure Jerusalem to be Jewish and remain Jewish. So that is prophetic because wow. Jesus is coming back to a Jewish Jerusalem. And so it, it, it has a lot to do with prophecy to see this government. This government now means it, it, they're going to ex, ex, expand settlements. Uh, Jerusalem will, will become a, a great burdensome stone like Zechariah says, it will it it will become the nations will will fight Israel over over Jerusalem and lose. So it's going to heat up. 
It's going to heat up a lot in the next mm. few weeks and months. And but maybe I don't think it will fail because the 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 Arab world needs Israeli technology, so they will not back off from him. I think they'll they'll still support him, and the, the, that peace will stay. Now Egypt today, Egypt and Jordan, without Israel, will collapse economically. Mm. Why? Because sir? why? Yeah. Why? Ah, good question. They just found gas up in the north, in the Mediterranean, and they just made a deal with Lebanon, giving Lebanon 17 times the size of Tel Aviv so they can pump it out. They were threatened by Hezbollah. If they would not give them part of the gas, they would attack them. And the previous government actually weakened and capitulated to threats. Oh. So Bibi going to have to deal with that somehow, and only time will see how he deals with that. But today Israel has so much gas to sell to Europe and the world no. because of the war between Russia and the Ukraine. That gas is not going from Russia now, so the whole world is looking to Israel. Mm. They, they have enough to the U.S. if we hadn't cut off our pipelines. Look, Israel today is 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 becoming a powerful force because of the gas and the oil they also found that will soon be produced. Mm -hmm. So now it's, it's, it, it goes through Egypt to Syria. You're still there, right, with us? Yeah, there's a pipeline. Are you saying there's a pipeline, sir, from Egypt to no, Syria? No, 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 no. Because Syria will not buy gas from Israel. Okay. And the Arab, some, other, some Arab nations will not buy gas from Israel. They will buy it from Egypt and Jordan. So Israel, because they have peace with Egypt and so, Jordan, yeah. they sell it. They, they are selling it through the Egyptians, through the Jordanians, and both nations are making money through that. See, that's crazy when Syria could just make peace with Israel and buy it straight and cut out the middleman and the cost increase. Right. So they become that middleman, and it means billions of dollars for their economy. Oh, Lord so God. They, they yeah. need think about those former enemies of Israel need Israel for their survival now. That's quite yeah. an amazing thing. And more than that, because Israel today is helping them keep the Sinai uh, free from ISIS. Yeah. So think about that Sisi of Egypt, who is the president, is allowing Israeli intelligence to work with his people and the military to work with his people to keep ISIS out. Never has such a small nation, even in landmass, had so much power and authority. And affecting their former enemies, former enemies. Uh. So I, 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 I tell you what I really would love to see happen, Katie. I would love to see you and Suzanne go to Israel, maybe even lead a tour, mm. uh, sometimes next year, and pray for the land, pray for the land of Israel for the protection of the land because those enemies aren't go, you know, are not going to go away tomorrow. They'll be yeah. there for a while, but I don't think for long. But let, but you need to go pray. You need to go believe God. And I think uh, the gospel is getting into Israel in a big way. And here's something else, by the way, just, just before we say goodbye. Under Bibi, the uh, messianic movements were thriving in Israel. It's amazing what's happening. Jews are winning Jews today on mass, on wow. mass. Uh, the leading man that was leading, I think he may still be there, who was leading the social media for Bibi was a born again Christian, a messianic believer. Yeah. The religious parties wanted him out. Mm. And Bibi said no. <laughs> so he kept him in there. So one of his people is a messianic. Believe it. Wow. So the Messianic movement is really thriving, was thriving, and will continue to thrive under Bibi. They love him dearly, and he loves them. Mm. So it's a wonderful thing happening. You know, he, of course, he can't be open about it because he could get in trouble, you know, with, yeah. with the religious parties. But he is a supporter of religious freedom in the land. Yeah. Well, it seems like so, prayer really supports him. I know your your wife went on a undercover secret mission with a group of intercessors right before BB got Yeah, elected. well, was a few days ago, in fact, I said, you got to go. And dear Linda Vega went and, and Amanda and others went with them. 
and uh, and Suzanne did a fabulous job there. And here we see the results. Now BB is going to have they're going to have 64 seats, wow. meaning they will not have a problem with with their coalition staying together. That's it was crazy. actually at 69 yesterday, and then it dropped at 64. But he had never had that many uh, seats in his block ever. Wow. Mm. This is the largest number that he's ever had in the block they call it the coalition mm -hmm. so now i have i have one more request and i'm making it here with you uh katie and suzanne uh the iranian people in london need support mm -hmm. in the uk i should say needs support so i was going to ask suzanne would you cons consider going to the uk soon like the next few days soon Oh, well. and, and and get some, some people, I'm serious, get some people to go with you to pray and meet with, and I can arrange it for you like this. In fact, they called yesterday to pray with them. To There's a lot of Iranian Christians in the UK hmm. and Muslims too. A lot of Iranian Christians. Were they driven They're out? All... Is that why, sir? Were they driven out of? Of Pardon? Israel? Were they driven out? Is that why they're in the UK or did they migrate there? What? No, they were driven out. They they left Iran when the when the Shah was toppled, many of mm. them, and then later on they just moved out because of the of the of the regime that's there in mm. power. Now many Iranians left Iran, those who could afford it, um, and many of them went to Europe and and UK, mm. and many of them came to Los to 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 the U.S. mostly Los Angeles, but the ones in London today, uh, it is a large community, a large community of Iranian very high up Iranian, very wealthy and very highly educated people. And when I was there, if you, in fact, I was there uh, right before COVID and many, many, many of them came to the meetings begging me to come to Birmingham where their main center is. Uh, and I said, oh, I'd come, but then, you know, COVID hit, I couldn't go. So they called uh, a few days ago asking, when can I come back? Well, I can't come right now. I've got, a, you know, a lot of things to do. So I thought, well, since I cannot go, Suzanne can go mm. and minister to them and pray with them. They need, just like you did for Israel, now it's time to do for Iran. But you can't go to Iran, naturally. The closest place is, is the UK, and you're from there anyway. Is that your blood? I'd love to. Yeah. And in fact, Suzanne had felt it a few days ago that she'll be going to the UK, and she mm. told Amanda she'd go to the UK. So I believe, listen, I believe... The, the part of prayer is the only part that can move Amen. the evil forces out of the way. You know, Amen. Catherine Kuhlman, by the way, keep me informed on how much yep, time so I have. So you've got five minutes right now. Okay, I want to say one more thing that I'm done. Christian Life magazine asked Catherine Kuhlman years ago, if there is one thing you would say to the body of Christ, if there's one advice you would give, what is it? She said, I would say to the body of Christ, no nation is stronger than its spiritual forces. Yeah, amen. Meaning only the body of Christ is stronger. Amen. So think about we have more power on our knees than all the nuclear power on earth. Thank you, Jesus. So we have the, the authority and we, we, we have the, the, the command to command these, these evil forces to let go. And not by commanding them, by asking God to do it for us, and, and He always answers prayer. A lot of people are rebuking this, rebuking that, and nothing is moving. But when you call upon the Lord Himself, He empowers you with that. But the people from Reese House School actually have been uh, texting Amanda and asking for a group to come to the United Kingdom and to pray. When do you want to go? Tomorrow? <laughs> Tomorrow, okay. Well, it's been wonderful being with you. Yes. And sir. I want to... And I know we're running out of time, but I want to say to the people who are listening and watching, support dear Katie and her ministry. Because, you know, uh, she is a very anointed woman. We've gotten to know her. She's been such a wonderful friend to Suzanne and myself. And, you know, it's, it's, it's rare to see people today so gifted uh, on TV like, like, like she is. And anointed. God is really blessing many, many people through her ministry. And and I would say, please, Katie, uh, let the Lord speak to you on this, on Iran. Yes, sir. That start talking more about it on your on, on your programs, that people should pray for, for those, because it is a ripe 
uh, moment for them. Like they're, they're like fruit uh, ripe on a tree uh, in Iran to turn to the Lord in mass, in mass. Mm -hmm. Pat Robertson said years ago, he said, when this regime stops, the entire nation will turn to Christianity. And he was right. Wow. So this is like a massive, this could be the biggest miracle in our day. Incredible. Is to see a nation like that come to the Lord mm. uh, on mass. Thank so uh, support dear, dear, dear Katie, support her ministry. Lord, I pray you'll bless your people mm. as they obey you right now. Lord, I pray you'll bless Katie, bless her amazing ministry, bless her staff, bless her future. Lord, anoint her greatly, anoint her mightily, and make her a mighty voice, you. shouting your word from the housetops in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Amen and Absolutely. amen, amen. And let me just say, you know, Katie has just, again, been such a blessing in my life, but we can only prosper as our soul prospers, and this nation needs the message that Katie is bringing to the United States, but also to the nations of the world. Yeah. And we just so love you, Katie, and we just back you in prayer in every way. And if yes. I may, I hope I hope people yes. will get my new book on the anointing, yeah. uh, Mysteries of the Anointing. It's selling tremendously. I talk about the the difference between the one within you and the one on you. Yeah. Very, yeah, so very important. Just to share with you a testimony about your book, um, we only have about a minute left, but... Uh, Dr. Francis Smiles, who I know you, you went and did his King's Conference and all that, yeah. and he actually, on the word of the Lord, locked himself away for three days with your book and had a massive encounter in the Lord's presence that completely shifted his life and his ministry. So that mm -hmm. book, if you could hold it up again, Pastor, one more time, yeah. um, has been used instrumentally yeah. to touch great leaders. Mystery of the Anointing. Guys, that's Mystery of the Anointing um, by Pastor Benny Han. Uh, Pastor, where can we get, where can the viewers buy that at? Uh, your website? Anywhere, no, anywhere. Amazon, in, anywhere books are sold, they can get it. Perfect. So I encourage well, it's, everybody, it's published by go Christmas, to Amazon, yeah. get Pastor Benny's latest book, The Mysteries of the Anointing. Dr. Francis Miles said it, it completely, uh, it just, it just, he was broken in the presence and the revelation he said was incredible. Pastor, thank you so much. It's an honor, sir. You, this was fabulous download. It's, it's just awesome. And I know everyone was blessed. And my friend, I love you, girl. Love you. Love you. Okay, everybody, we love you too. Thanks for tuning in today. Remember, we're here every Wednesday at Faith with Katie. Make sure you replay this show so that you can hear all these downloads. They're incredible information about the time in the earth right now and how the entire world is pivotal around what happens in Jerusalem. Share this broadcast. So many people are going to be blessed. And as far as I, I will see you next week. Love you. Bye-bye.